Welcome to Women Talk. I'm Joyce. It's been said that women talk about everything, anything, and anywhere. Two women standing on a line at the local post office began to chit chat about the packages they were sending. By the time one reached the postal clerk, they both knew what was in each one's package, where it was going, to whom it was for, the reason they were sending it, and why they needed to send it that day. Welcome to Women Talk. brings together women of various cultures and backgrounds from the Piscataway community to share and learn from each other. Today's guests are Judy and Kara. Before I introduce today's topic, let's meet our guests. Kara. Hi, my name is Kara. <laughs> I've lived in Piscataway since 1974 and I'm an active member of the Senior Center here in Piscataway. I teach the Taekwondo class and a Rays of the Dawn discussion group. And I attend a few classes as well, come to socialize, meet people, and just in general have a very good time here. Judy. Well, my name is Judy and I am in Piscataway only one year. I moved here last summer, but as soon as I got here, probably within a week, my son drove me to the Senior Center, and it's been like one of the highlights of my experience here as a new person in town. I come three days a week. I'm in Kara's Taekwondo class, and I've learned a lot. I was never very co well coordinated, but Taekwondo has improved me uh, quite a bit. Um, I'm really happy to be here. And my other favorite place in Piscataway are the two libraries, Westergaard and Kennedy. I'm happy to be in Piscataway. Ladies, some trivia. Did you know that September 11th is Grandparents' Day? However, this year it's going to be celebrated on September 12th so we can honor those who lost their lives on 9-11. August 3rd, 1978, President Jimmy Carter signed the proclamation that the first Sunday after Labor Day will be known as National Grandparents Day. And then there's National Gorgeous Grandma's Day. <laughs> that was July 23rd. It was an opportunity to honor and express gratitude toward grandmas. So, ladies, let's talk. First of all, how many grandchildren do each of you have? I have two, two grandsons. One of them is 25 and one of them is 19. Okay. Each daughter has one son. Well, I have three kids and they all have kids. <clears throat> I have a batch of grandchildren and I'm gonna tell you the truth. My mother, who was the daughter of immigrants, always said to me, never say how many grandchildren you have. You are going to attract the evil eye. <laughs> so I am going to keep that a secret, but I have a batch of grandchildren. The oldest one is 37, and the youngest one is 19, and they, many of them have children. Yes, I'm a great grandma. Oh, you're a great grandmother. Well. I have, and I'm going to say three, <laughs> not attracting the evil eye, and I have three, and two of them are twins. Oh. One girl, one boy, and then there's another younger brother. They are 17, they're gonna get me on this, and I believe 15, okay? So, as we talk about our grandchildren, can you remember what they called you, Judy? Well. Um, 
there was some talk about it when I was ready to become a grandmother, whether it would be <laughs> Nana or something else. But I always called my grandparents Grandma or Grandpa. And I said to them, I want you to call me Grandma. And they called me Grandma. Okay. Sweet. Sometimes they had a fight. One of them decided she wanted to call me Mom Mom. I wasn't going to argue with a two year old, but um, eventually they all called me Grandma, and they still do. Yeah. Okay. Cara. Mine call me Grandma. I didn't look, f uh, that's what I called my grandparents, Grandma and Grandpa. We never had any other names, and it was just automatic, just call me Grandma, call, call Grandpa, Grandpa, and that's what it became. Well, you ladies are good, because I didn't want to be called Grandma. And I told my daughter when she had her children that I would be called Grammy. For me, I don't know why it sounded kind of good, okay? And that was what they were supposed to call me. But when my grandson was two, he was walking down the street with his dad, and he saw me get out of my car, and he said, Mimi, because he couldn't get that G out, okay? And I fell in love with the word Mimi, okay? <laughs> I love that, that name. So I am Mimi. As they got to be about 10, they decided I was memes. Just cut it short and call me memes. So they named me. I originally named myself, but they actually put the um, icing on the cake. So let me ask you ladies, how much involvement with your grandchildren did you have when they were small? Let's go there. Um, well, my older daughter has two daughters, and they lived near me when they were small. Not now. They grew up. They got married. They had children. One's in California. One's in Florida. I mean, people just leave, and you can't stop them. Anyway, when they were small, they lived near me, and I used to take the two of them out, first to like a playground in McDonald's, and then in their strollers and all that. And then when they grew up, I would take them to the museum. We lived near Philadelphia at yeah. the time. And I would take them to the museum because they had a program where children could sit down and copy things and draw. And they both liked to draw. So that was a very nice thing to do with kids who were like, say, 7 and 10, you know, 8 and 11. During those years, I would do that. And they enjoyed it. And they still have some of those pictures around. I remember one got put in a frame, you know, uh -huh. so it's a good memory of spending time with them. Yeah. Cara. Uh, my best memories uh, that I, I started thinking about last night, knowing that I was going to be here, when my daughter and son-in-law, either one of them, would take a, a weekend vacation, they'd be away for a short time, or they had some place to go for an evening activity. And, and they didn't want to get a babysitter when my grandkids would come over, usually individually, because they're a few years apart. So it would usually be only one. Uh, so it would be those two, three-day weekends when they'd mm. come and stay in my house, um, get up and have breakfast together, go, to, go swimming somewhere. Um, one of my grandsons used to love a place, and I won't say the name, but it, it was a big public place where you would take your kids mm. for pizza parties, birthday parties especially, and they had characters dressed up singing and dancing, and lots of games. They could just run and play the games in a very safe environment with wristbands mm. on, so you knew they were very safe. And one of my grandsons used to love going there because he was collecting those tickets that you got at the end after you won yes. all your tokens. And then you'd, before you left, you'd get all your tickets, and you could claim a wonderful prize. And every time he came over, he wanted to go to this place. And that was one of our favorite things to do. Sounds great. And I remember I was uh, cleaning a bulletin board at home last week, and I found one of the old pictures because one of the games there is you sit down and they take a picture of you and a computerized picture mm -hmm. comes out. And I have a few of them with him. And then uh, there were times I brought both grandsons at the same time. And, and I have those pictures as well with me and the two of them sitting on, the, on this little toy thing going, 
<laughs> smiling, and it was so much fun. That was one of his favorite things and one of mine because it took a long time, half the day, and he was happy for half a day being occupied. Okay, well, my, my recall, when my grandchildren were small, particularly the boys, they loved to have me, I would play with them. And they would always, I'll never forget this, I was taking them to school one day, my daughter and her husband, I don't know if they were away or wherever, and I was staying at her house and I was taking them to school. And we get outside, I knew how to walk to the school, I didn't know the path to drive. So I get outside and I say to them, okay guys, um, which way do we go? And these two twins got together and they started whispering one to the other. And then they tried to take me in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> and I guess they thought I had no clue. Mm -hmm. And they were just sitting there plotting, oh. okay, to have me get lost somewhere. And I'm quite sure they would have thrown me under the bus with their, <laughs> with their parents about how I didn't get them to school on time. Uh -huh. But I remember, I remember that so clear. And then we would play, as they got about 9, 10, the boys liked to play um, basketball. And they had a basketball, you know, the courts, the basketball, what is it? Net. Net in the driveway. And they were trying to teach me how to play basketball. And I had no intentions of wanting to learn at this age how to play basketball, run around, okay? So I would always pretend that I couldn't do anything, I couldn't make it, and they would get like, oh my gosh, she can't get anything together. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really yeah. enjoyed them when they were younger because I could, they thought they were getting over on me and I yeah. knew I could get over on uh -huh. them, okay? Very interesting. So, I mean, another outstanding thing was the youngest was having a birthday party. And my daughter and her husband had planned it at one of these um, outdoor uh, pools. And I found in Pandora, Pandora is the, was the uh, shop in the senior center where you could buy all kinds of articles that folks didn't want anymore. And I bought a birdcage, okay? And I took the birdcage to the birthday party, but I covered it. You know how you cover the birds so they're not supposed to be afraid? Uh -huh. I covered it. And I put it where they were getting ready to celebrate. And I remember my daughter, her husband's parents, everybody's going, what does she have under there? Okay. And the only one who knew was the youngest one. And he's always throwing me under the bus. And so <laughs> he knew and he was ecstatic and they were, when I opened it up and it was just a surprise for really the parents and all the parents who came but my daughter and her husband was very interesting they were off to the side plotting how they were going to get that bird out of that cage because they weren't going to take it home <laughs> and get rid of it okay and you had a bird in it no Oh, see, that was the whole joke. There was no bird. <laughs> but when I saw that bird cage oh. in Pandora's, yeah. I found that it would be a wonderful gift. Oh, to, okay, because my youngest one loved to play tricks anyway, uh -huh. and so he knew that was a good trick. Okay, that was good. But there was nothing in it, and so, but he oh. was making his parents also very nervous. That about this bird. So that was my fondest memory of being, <laughs> of being able to pull that one off. I had a whole bunch of them I pulled off with them. My daughter would that, that get a little upset. That is a good upset. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I remember having fun with my, um, my oldest one's grandchildren who lived near me. We used to make tents and when I was a kid, even my parents sometimes helped us to make tents. Tents are a very good thing if you live in an apartment or a small oh, house mm -hmm. because you can fill up the living room and you feel like you're actually doing something. Okay. Yeah. I used to play tents with my sister decades ago when I was young, and then I made tents for my 
these two grandchildren who were married and have children of their own. They have all big houses. I don't know if they're ever going to make tents, but we would drag out <laughs> bedspreads and cover them oh. over the chairs, or you cover a big bedspread <laughs> over a small table and you can crawl underneath. We always pretended that there was a storm outside and we had to like brave the storm to bring food back for our babies or something. Oh. I don't know. My grandkids used to love it, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that was another fun thing. My other grandchildren, though, lived in England. One of my daughters oh. married a Brit, and she lived there for many years. Um, and so my, uh, I have a batch of grandchildren in England. And um, the best way that I've kept in touch with them over the years, I've flown over to England about 30 oh, times. Okay. That's why I have now money in the bank. But, <laughs> and I sometimes, if I want to see them, give them money to fly to me. But... Um, what was really so, I don't know, just developed. I used to write letters from the time they were about three or four years old addressed to them with just a, I would draw a little picture inside. And then I would write a letter when they could read, like, Grandma loves you or something. But eventually I started sending them, um, when I would go there, I would buy stamps. And when I was back in the United States, I would make a stamp self-addressed envelope and send it to them with a little card inside, like, you know, to write a line or something. And believe it or not, over the years, the oldest one's 37, I've trained them so <laughs> that I have a table this oh. big with oh. files in it for each one, oh. and each oh. one, every single one, has sent me birthday cards or oh. letters or, Grandma, I was on vacation, and I know you always send me letters, so I'm sending you one. And I've oh. saved most of them. And I would say I have... A whole batch, oh, I wow. really do, oh, and that's and a great um, idea. sometimes when they come to my house, I take out their folder and open it oh, all up, and that's great. and they say, I can't believe this, Grandma. You saved the scribble. Well, I said your mother sent it to me. She knew I would value your <laughs> scribble. He said, but I thought it would go in the bin. Well, they're English. That's the way they talk. Uh, I said, no, your scribble is important to me. Just remember, you're an important person. Take care of that self. So that's like one special thing that I've always had and will have till the rest of my life. And then I will make sure that my children give each of them their folders oh, and they oh, could nice. show it to their children or throw it away. But you just gave me a great idea. What a great idea. Because I always. had it nowhere. I just got all these little pieces of paper. Things nice. hanging around the house. I never thought about it. I, I, I've told it to loads of people, but they say now nah, we just email or something. I said, but you can hold in your hand a letter written by a grandchild who's 17 when he was six. Yeah. I said, a real letter, because their mothers make them sit down and do it, yeah. of course, when they were little. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I have, I have good stuff. I wasn't going to bring it, but okay. it's a special highlight. Well, Carol, you have any fond yeah. memories? Yeah, I do. Um, one of my grandsons was terrified of dogs. And I have no idea why, because we always have dogs. We keep, we have two dogs at a time usually. Sometimes we've had one dog, sometimes we have three. But we've gotten to the point where we always have two dogs. And whenever he would come to spend time, he would be terrified. And when we were downstairs, the dogs would have to be upstairs in the crates, but they, they were barkers. The ones I had then were barkers, and he, that scared him. Then when we would come upstairs, I'd have to bring them downstairs, close the door, and he would feel safe because the dogs were not in the same room. Then when it was bedtime, he'd say, well, where are they going to be now? Well, you're going to be sleeping, so they're going to be loose in the house and your door will be closed, it's okay. So I was a fan of Caesar Milan, watching all the shows, and one of the days that he was with me, he was watching intently, he said, Grandma, I don't want to be afraid of dogs anymore. And I said, okay, so what are you going to do about it? He, and I had two at the time. One was very gentle, and he could come over and touch her and do anything. The other was very sweet, but I wouldn't want to be face to face with her, even though she was my dog. So I told him which one he could go and play with, and I let him touch her ears, her tail, her mm. mouth, everything. And I said, but you don't do this with other dogs. 
this is her and she's letting you when you're around other people you say is your dog friendly can I pet your dog and you keep your distance and you ask and you use caution so after that he grew to love the dogs and every time he'd come to visit we'd have to take pictures of the dogs either on the sofa in the chair and outside every time he came we have to have dog pictures with him and the dogs and then one time his parents came to pick him up and one of the dogs that my daughter really didn't like much growing up because the dog kind of teased her and she just didn't want to be bothered trying to work with the dog we went to the door with the dog on leash his parents outside coming to pick him up my daughter kind of stepped back he says mom it's just a dog she won't hurt you and he was the like this group. big <laughs> you know was telling telling um, telling her don't be scared and at that point that dog could hardly stand and walk anymore and my daughter goes yeah I guess she's okay now and she reached down and petted her so he got to love dogs through this one dog that I had that's a nice story. That's a nice story. I never cared for dogs when I. I, I do. <laughs> you know, you know, I do. They I rule my dogs. life. Okay, but I never cared for dogs. Well, no, mine rule my life. Okay, they rule. Yeah, they they do. They that's, do that's rule my do. life. They yes. rule your lives. We had a dog when my kids were little. I don't have a dog now. Okay, I'm just taking care of me as a piece of work <laughs> these days. Yeah. No, um, and I don't have any animals at present, but we had cats for a while, we had dogs. When the kids were young, you know, and um, uh, yeah, some of my grandkids do have dogs. Okay. Yeah. You know, animals teach children a sense of responsibility yeah. um, because they have to care for them. That's true. You know, and I remember another, <laughs> I gave my daughter, uh, my one of my grandchildren I gave them hermit crabs oh yes oh that's I, a good idea I know what those are too and my daughter was don't you bring another <laughs> thing <laughs> and I would always take it to these parties to give to them so they never they would oh. never know what's hidden under oh no those were the, those were my fun moments with them oh, um, my fun moments with them but then I had to recognize their parents weren't so happy and always <laughs> wanted to know what's under there that yeah. you've got hiding so yeah I gave hermit crabs one year well I like the noisy toys when my grandkids were oh. young I, I like sounds I like bells I like chimes and, oh. and I would give them the toys that made the most noise that were just so much fun that I had with in the them. house yeah, the toys, little oh, toys. Yeah. Children they, must have been thrilled. They, the oh, children, their parents and, and so, must have been honored. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, somehow, those toys either ended up in their attic or the batteries would die out and they never replaced the batteries. Except one time in one of my daughter's houses, they put this toy up in the attic, just the crawl space, and they didn't take the battery out, and every once in a while they'd hear these noises. <laughs> and they'd say, where are these noises come from? And I think maybe it wasn't too popular then. <laughs> but I, okay. the kids loved the toys, and so did I. And we had fun with them, and the little nursery rhymes, playing them over and over and over again. Oh, they never get bored of that. that they don't, sure. and that neither do sure. I, Judy. Now you know something new about me. I love the sounds and the little songs. Do you have any memories of your grandmother? My, my mother's mother passed away when I was 16, and we lived three blocks away from her. <clears throat> my mother was the youngest of 10 children and the only daughter. And as her mother was old and became a widow, she would um, take wow. us before we, when we were preschoolers in a little carriage, uh, the three blocks to her house and spend time with her. And then she would collect her clothes, take them back to our apartment and wash and starch them. Oh. The, you know, okay. my old yep. grandmother wore something called a house dress, okay. which is you, uh. easier to explain, yeah. like a suit of armor, <laughs> which more people are familiar uh, with yep. than a house dress. Yeah. But it was okay. like a long cotton thing that was printed and had to be starched. Okay. My grandmother was wow. very fussy. Um, but I remember those walks to her house, and she always would give us 
something that I didn't know what it was till I was older. She would open a little box, put something in my mouth. No. It was very, no, it was a hard candy, very, very sweet. And it was called rock candy. candy. Oh, yes. Did you oh, hear yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Sugar. And she said. It's all sugar. <laughs> it was. And she never spoke to me. She never deigned to speak to any of the grandchildren in English, even though she understood it well oh. enough to go to the movies. So she would say, nemeshtik. It means oh. take a piece. Oh, nice. She would okay. say that in Yiddish, yes, okay. to me. That was okay. about it, but she had a lot of grandchildren, <laughs> and she was an old lady, <laughs> and she didn't, you know, give you more than that much attention. Okay. Oh. But it was still like okay. something I remember going to her apartment, okay. taking that walk. Cara, quickly before we wind down, huh? what memories do you have of your grandmother? Um, I don't have a lot of memories okay. of my grandmother. I do remember we lived. Up till I was seven, we lived in the same town, and and I re, I, re, I have those memories of her. We'd see we'd go and visit her. She'd come and visit us, and then after we moved from from where we lived um, to California, um, she would come to visit. But she would come to visit with uh, things in cardboard boxes. Her, she'd literally bring her things in cardboard boxes. Okay. And I don't quite know why, but she did, and it was just always an interesting visit. Okay. I had some great <laughs> memories, but, uh, and some bad memories. She used to put in my hand, my grandparents lived in Charleston, so she would put my finger in these crabs to show me how a crab could grab you, put it in my finger in his claw. That was how she trained me how to pick up a crab and not pick oh, it up. Oh, got it. It okay. wasn't a nice training. I didn't think so. But, <laughs> okay. you know, back then everybody did things their own way and brought these teachings to you, okay? And that was where we were. But um, I'm going to say thank you, ladies, because I can't believe that we are out of time. And I want to thank you, and I want to thank our viewers for joining us. And I also want to thank the TV crew here at Piscataway TV, because they have been patient, <laughs> and they have listened, and I just want to say thank you. And next month's topic is going to be, I'm retired. Okay, and remember, to everyone, women talk about everything and anything, anywhere. Thank you. <laughs>